Just a quick note about the uh, lesson, uh, both from the Psalms, which the choir sang, uh, as well as you heard Bruce Reed, and the uh, lesson from uh, the Gospel of Luke. The synoptic Gospels, meaning Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all have the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness before he begins his ministry. And so the, the early church has used that story to begin the season of Lent uh, each year. The Gospel of John doesn't say anything about that story. Mark is very, uh, very brief, just says that Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Matthew and Luke have expanded the story for, uh, for their teaching and their proclamation of who Jesus was to their community. Jesus begins uh, his, his ministry in Galilee after a period of wilderness time. The key uh, to the temptations is, is a belief that God can travel with us during our times of testing. And there is nothing in the world that empire can throw at us that will keep us from the path of following God and God's will for us. So I'm going to leave the temptation story, and I'm going to talk about forgiveness and keys. Certain doors that we uh, use each day, like doors to... Uh, our home or our garage uh, need a key to unlock them. And so I'm going to tell you uh, a memorable key story. Uh, it was the first day of uh, Reverend Tom Stockdale's ministry as senior pastor of Union Avenue Christian Church in the summer of 1985. I was serving as associate minister of, of Union Avenue, had been there uh, for four years before Tom was called to be on staff. Uh, this is the church that uh, Chris uh, grew up in, and it was a church that was located in the inner city of St. Louis. It was a historic church. It was built in the early uh, uh, 1900s uh, during the World's Fair in St. Louis, and it was built to serve the United Christian Missionary Board, which has become, which morphed into the general offices of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, now in Indianapolis. Reverend Stockdale was the newly called senior minister, and Union Avenue was very proud of its uh, senior ministers. They had, they have not had that many in their long history. Like Bethany uh, has not had that many in a long and proud history. Uh, Tom was a graduate of the University of Chicago Divinity School. He was a gifted theologian, and Tom was known for his creativity, uh, his literary skills, and as he himself said of himself, I have a great honed sense of humor. So on the first day of work, Tom walks in the door, with a locked door. Uh, neither I nor the staff were given a chance to meet Reverend Stockdale before he was called to be senior minister. So on his first day uh, on the job, we were introduced to uh, this person we would be working for. And so Tom walks in the door, and I happen to be waiting there to, to greet him. And uh, he said, uh, Daryl, I want you to come with me because I've lost, uh, or, or a set of keys of mine is locked in my garage uh, at home, and I need to get there because my wife, Pat, is in a hurry to get to a job interview at Barnes Hospital. So that was my first meeting. We walked outside rather hurriedly, and we, I noticed in the parking lot was this little silver Honda, and this uh, small car, its driver's side door was <coughs> wide open. Grant, this, Grant, this is the... Uh, uh, inner city of St. Louis. And so I thought to myself, hmm, a little scatterbrained, I think. But I said, Tom, uh, it's pretty wise that you uh, 
uh, lock your doors uh, whenever you park in the church parking lot, and don't leave the door open. So he kind of laughed, and he said, we have to make one stop before we go home. So we, we made a stop at this uh, 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 key place, and he went inside and was given this key ring of hundreds, hundreds of master keys. And he had to find which key would open his garage door to get to the car so his wife could go to the interview at the hospital. And so Tom said, here, Daryl, <laughs> you find the key. And my response is, well, okay, but what will you give me if I find the right key on the very first try? And he said, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> so I looked at the keys, just randomly chose a key, put it in the, the lock, and voila, it was the right key on the very first try. And so we went into the, to, to the garage, and that car still had its radio going, uh, playing classical music on NPR. And I thought, my gosh. And his wife is at the door and she says, Tom, I found the keys. She said they were in the freezer. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And so I, uh, we walk inside the house and, uh, and Tom opens the freezer door grabs an ice cream sandwich and says, here's your lunch. <laughs> so, maybe you're wondering, how does forgiveness fit into the story? <laughs> Reverend Stockdale was a, a, a wonderful senior pastor to work for, and I enjoyed the friendship that we established in our course of, of uh, the next four years. He was brilliant, he was articulate, he was very creative, he had some gifted ideas, or how to do ministry in the inner city. And he, yes, he was extremely funny. And Chris and I grew to be pretty close to Tom and his wife, uh, Pat. And Reverend Stockdale officiated our marriage in 1991. When Tom retired, uh, probably 10 years ago, I had an opportunity to write a, congrat a congratulations note for a memory book that Union Avenue was uh, putting together for his retirement. I missed that opportunity uh, due to just procrastination, and I wanted to get this note just right, and so I never got to it because I wanted it to be too perfect. And I've regretted not writing a note ever since. Tom died about six years ago, and so something I would like to ask forgiveness for is to the opportunities that I've missed in my life to say thank you to people who have made an important contribution to my life journey. Thank you, Reverend Stockdale. You were important to me as a friend, as a mentor, as a colleague. And I have learned deeply from you in my Christian journey. On Wednesday evening, we began a 40-day journey through the season of Lent. And it was a beautiful time of, of fellowship with the other Disciples of Christ churches. We filled the sanctuary uh, on the floor, and we were greatly blown away because I had planned for... Well, I was going to turn cartwheels at 100 people, and I really thought only 75 would probably come, because when I talked with the other clergy, they said, well, we're bringing a few, a couple, but not that many. So, and I was putting together what we usually uh, average on Ash Wednesday, and so I thought if we do 100, we're fine. Well, we had 175, and so we ran out of everything. But people were still wonderfully happy and complimentary of the service and feeling that well, this is kind of cool that we ran out of everything because it shows the unity that we share as disciples of Christ in Lincoln, Nebraska. 
Lent is the season that prepares us for Easter. Sundays are not included in the season of Lent because the early church would see every Sunday as a day of resurrection. So you know, you've heard this before, you can eat chocolate, you can drink soda, you can do anything you want to on Sunday because it's not considered Lent. During Lent, we come clean with God. And we admit that we have fallen short of our noble intentions of walking faithfully with God and to be God's agents or ambassadors in the work of transformation and healing and reconciliation in a world that so often chaos seems to rule the day. When it calls us to look at our lives honestly and to determine what we need to do a little more of and what we need to do a little less of. So the worship team has chosen the theme, Forgiveness is Key. Look at the bulletin board in the hallway if you haven't had a chance to do that before you leave. Lori Holcroft does beautiful art. And that was the last station on Wednesday night where we got received our key. Maybe forgiveness is just one of those disciplines that we need a little more of to make our life a little better. To make our church a little healthier and kind. To make our world a little more whole and less broken. And Jesus taught us a prayer that we say every week after we receive the elements of communion. It's the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And I like the word debts because I think Jesus really had, had debts in mind, knowing that where he ministered was deeply in debt from all the commercialization on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said, forgive us our debts, because Jesus was among a peasant class who couldn't pay their debts. As we forgive those we are indebted to. On April 19, 1995, a truck packed with explosives was detonated outside the Alfred Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, leaving 171 people dead, including three unborn children. And the blast was set off by the anti-government militant Timothy McVeigh. Bud Welch had a daughter named Julie, and Julie was killed in the Federal Building bombing. When he heard about Timothy McVeigh's arrest, he felt only rage and desire, a desire for revenge at the murder of his daughter. McVeigh's lack of remorse and repentance only fueled Bud Welch's rage inside. And he said, I just want him fried. Bud's hate took him on a journey of many sleepless nights and drunken binges to numb the pain. And it also led him to the bombing site in Oklahoma City. And on that visit, like so many people who visited the Twin Towers in New York City, once they arrived at that site, all they felt was a need to change. Bud remembered watching Bill McVeigh, the bomber's father, on television, suddenly recognizing his pain and grief in that father's eyes. And so he arranged to actually meet the father of Timothy McVeigh. And they sat together and talked about their children, one who was dead, and one who soon would be dead, through capital punishment. Forgiveness and mercy overwhelmed Bud Welch when he sat with Bill McVeigh. And Bud said, I never felt closer to God. Never. 
closer to God than I felt at that moment. When asked later about those who resented his forgiveness of Timothy McVeigh, he said, they think they'll get some kind of healing, but there's nothing about killing that's going to help them. Forgiveness is a huge word, church. Why do we find it so hard to forgive someone? I think that maybe, perhaps, there are just some things that happen in life that will never be forgiven. And I understand that. But without forgiveness, there is no peace. Without forgiveness, we can never, ever experience true peace. Bud Welch experienced that lesson. In our personal worlds, as individuals, but also as a nation and as people of, of the world, God's world, When we choose judgment and mercy, when we choose judgment over mercy, and when we choose revenge over reconciliation, we subvert the will of God to usher in what we call the kingdom of God, or God's new age. And it goes counter to everything Jesus talked about. Revenge fantasies do great damage when revenge fantasies become national policy. In response to the terrorist attacks in New York City on September 11, 2001, the United States, in defiance of international law, made the decision to invade and occupy Iraq. Remove Saddam Hussein from power. What that revenge act did was to create ISIS. Forgiveness, church, is key. It's a hard word, it's a long word, and it's a word that's filled with so much emotion. So much feeling. But studies have shown that when we forgive others, it produces strong psychological benefits for the one who forgives. And forgiveness has been shown through tests to decrease depression, anxiety, unhealthy anger, and symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome. Marjorie Thompson, author of Soul Feast and the book Forgiveness, <clears throat> that our Explorations group will be studying here in the next few weeks, said this, and I think it's one of the greatest quotes ever about forgiveness. She said, Forgiveness is the healing stream flowing out from a crucified Christ over a world that does not know how desperately it needs the healing. Forgiveness is the healing stream flowing out from a crucified Christ over a world that does not know how desperately it needs the healing. And so church, during these next five weeks, let us enter the journey of forgiveness knowing that forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of divinity within us.